And we are back. Nimrandir uh, coming back to a Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Bit of a lag spike there. Um, let's see here. So um, when last we left, we kind of um, managed to clear out most of the dialogue stuff. We spoke to um, these um, NPCs, Journal and Forn Autumn Haze. We have a basement we can go take a look at. And I guess technically Hellwig could steal some stuff, you know, from the defender's heart but that seems kind of messed up so anyway we're just going to go on down to the basement and see what it reveals it reveals a black screen aha that's all i need to do is make fun of it okay wait nope oh. surrender thy soul delvin the amade protect us <laughs> Got you again. How many times is that today? Take your jokes and shove them, tiefling. Um. Whoa, easy there, chief. Don't hit me. All right. What? So we we can. This is, I guess, the brig. Okay. So there's a drawbridge. I'm not messing with that. I don't know why I would want to mess with that. Um. Head on! This guy's name is Wol Wolgif, or Volgif, or y you get the idea. Not sure how I'm supposed to be pronouncing it in this instance, but let's see what he's got to say. Hey, Chief. Hey, Dreamboat, come over here. I want to talk to you about something. Something really important. Dreamboat. Okay. Um, also, he has a portrait, so that's, you know, that's a thing. Um, young tiefling sits cross-legged on the floor. He looks relatively calm for someone in shackles, but his tail whips back and forth in agitation. Noticing my attention, he sits up and has beckoned me over. Quit bothering the decent people in here, Wolgif, or I'll knock your teeth out! Thanks for that, it's Wolgif. Okay, thank you, Delvin. I don't know who you are, but thanks, Delvin. What's it to you, Delvin, dum-dum? You were told to guard me, and I'm not stopping you. But no one told me I had to shut my trap. Uh... That's... okay, sure. Wolgif. Wolgif Jeffdo. Ideal in useful things. I can get you whatever you want. Anything. But there's just one problem. <laughs> uh, tiefling rattles his chains and gives me a meaningful look. Yeah, um... Huh. Okay. Why are you in chains? Does it really matter? Don't get hung up on the past, Chief. Don't look to the future. Live in the here and now. Wolgif's not here to talk about the past. Um... I didn't like that line back in, you know, the performance-enhancing drug era of baseball, and, you know, not sure I'm big on it now. He was caught thieving. Fair enough. <laughs> What's up with the shadow? <laughs> Get me out of here and I'll tell you. And don't worry, it's not contagious. Uh, does he a shadow dancer, maybe? Yeah. Sorry, talking, like, prestige class speak. What does he want from me? Um... <laughs> what does he want from Hellwig? I'll lay it out for you. Simple job, 30 minutes tops. We go someplace, talk to someone, and in return, whatever you want, I'll get it for you. Some extra rations, no problem. Armor, weapons, scrolls, you name it. It's as good as yours. If you need my help with something, whistle and I'll be there. I'm handy enough with knives, too. And even my magic know-how isn't too shabby. <laughs> what a load of guff. If you were good at magic, you wouldn't be stuck in here now, would you? Delvin has a point. Can I can I recruit Delvin? I mean, of course not. He doesn't have a picture, but... Don't you listen to him, Chief. He'd find fault with the Queen herself. I'll be useful to have in battle, and I'll sell whatever you want at a reasonable price. It's your lucky day. You won't meet another gem like me in Canabras. <laughs> He'll sell... Okay, he, he'll sell me things. I was trying to figure out if he was offering to fence stuff I obtained or what. But, okay. um, Yeah, I mean, technically I think I've got a couple of companion slots. Like, I think my party size should go up to six. But, um, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm honestly not feeling this guy. Like, I mean, clearly he's supposed to be good at the thievery thing, but so is Camellia. And she can also buff me while this dude just kind of goes shanky shank. Um, That's easy. Nope. You know Irabeth? Feisty I looking gal, one. always wears armor. You can't miss her. She's the meanest fighter in the whole city. When you see her, 
Put in a good word for me, will ya? Tell her there's this guy, Wolgif, locked up for no good reason in the Defender's heart. Well, for the follies of his youth. And he really wants to get out on bail so he can keep up his good behavior and make a contribution to society. You got that? Will you do it? Uh, I need to think about it. I actually honestly didn't even mean to pick that option. I forgot that the list didn't scroll around, so I hit up from number one to get to we'll talk later, and it just didn't go anywhere. Well, think fast. I'm already losing feeling in my legs sitting here. Okay. We'll, we'll talk later, Wolgif. And then, as I in we lead. probably vote. Huh. I can't help but think that if I pull that, like, the his thing opens or something, and, you know, then the guards attack me. So, so there's some stuff down there. I don't know what exactly it entails, but... So I guess technically I have a, a fifth companion option. So, so at this stage, it feels like it is about time for us actually to head out into Canabras proper, because I think we've done all, as much as I love the role play and the talky stuff, I think I've pretty much reached capacity for it. So I don't think there's, well, not, I haven't reached capacity. I've reached capacity of what the game's gonna give me. But um, so I was looking and uh, <laughs> taking a look at the journal page before I, you know, booted up the uh, recording and uh i've got a lot of stuff to do this is sort of like the uh it feels like the end of uh chapter uh, as we say chapter two in the original Baldur's gate where everything just kind of went like kablooey and the whole world sort of ends up opening up to you it's obviously not that it's still fairly tightly constrained i can't get outside canaveras this is Maybe a, I was gonna say maybe more of an analog to Final Fantasy VII, like the early bits when mid, you're still stuck in Midgar. But um, anyway, so so we've got all kinds of quests here. Holga's Gwum has asked us to you know go to his house. We're you know we need to go scout the Tower of Estrad. It says scout. Do not attack the Tower of Estrad. Um, we have you know we need to go find the storyteller person in the Blackwing Library. Uh, and uh, Sela's friend, Janna, an Aldori sword lord, apparently. So that's kind of a thing. Um, it's kind of in, linked to this bit about the Divided City because we need to go look for her at the Market Square, according to this. Um, we also got the side quest from Forn looking for this Kalesa person, which, you know, we, we, we don't know exactly what that is. Jernal offered us to meet him, but this is explicitly going to happen later because it says wait for the liberation of Canabras, which we can't quite do right now. The one that I think concerns me most at this stage is this bit right here, this quest called a, uh, a Stay of Execution. So it says talking about you know, when demons will deal the final blow to the defender's heart. So I'm guessing on some level I've got some kind of timer. Eventually, I don't know whether it's me completing stuff here if it's in terms of like days like you know in game time or what so i'm i'm not 100 percent certain exactly how that's gonna shake out um i am presuming i'll still be able to take my party members with me as i uh step outside hopefully it's not just hellwig by himself i figure at the very least sila is gonna join me and lan as you saw in the last video really wants to go out there and do something so i'm presuming my you know quartet from making my way up previously will uh will appear but as you say as options to take with me which is important because at the moment my uh, inventory is like super duper full like crazy full because there's not a merchant here which actually before i go i should probably drop off some Everyone of this stuff is mortal in this world thank you for telling me that every Oh, thank you, Hellwig. Um, yeah, so before I go, I did notice I have a personal chest in here. So, yeah, so... I guess I should drop... What, what is this? What? I have a thing. Sovereign Dragon summons a tiny pet Sovereign Dragon. Um, Sovereign Dragon's Great Wisdom, okay. Gives me some skill check bonuses? Uh... That's kind of interesting. I'm going to leave it there for now, though. Um, anyway, so here we go. Let's, let's deposit those 13 bardishes and five scythes I'm carrying. We'll keep radiance around. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Okay, so 
Yeah, I'm trying to get rid of sort of like the extra masterwork stuff and the half plate that I'm still inexplicably carrying. Um, the bracers, I might come across somebody who could use them. So, there's my fork. We got, we still got the fork. But yeah, I think I've put up enough stuff. I'm back down to lightweight now, so that's useful. Um, oh, masterwork scimitars. I don't need them. Got a masterwork short sword. If I, uh, you know, if I happen to come across somebody who is not properly equipped, the plain old short bow. Why do I have that? Bye. Peace out. Um. Okay. So there's the the book about the Minotaur and stuff. So the rest of this... Alright, yeah. Y'all have watched me pl I won't play with inventory anymore on camera than I have to. Move at least out. this way I'm not, like, overburdened. So, so yeah, we're gonna go outside. I have no idea what this looks like. I don't know if we're getting a world map or if I really do, like, literally appear on, a, like, a movable screen outside here. We get a black screen. Checks out. Well, looks like we got some crusaders over here. Wow, my camera hopped up on me. So, all right. So, let's see. All right. So, we've got a desk of some sort over here. Is that... Head on! This place has been sanctified. It can protect the area around it from the corruption of the abyss. Okay, good. So that doesn't, you know, that corruption thing is a, not an issue. Canabra's Crusader. How much longer can we hold out? A day? Two? Uh oh. Um. What? It, what? Wait, wait, what? That, that thing is huge. Commander, look what we've got here. Are you too mad? Whatever possessed you to steal the gem golem from the Tower of Estrid Museum? Explain yourselves. We didn't steal nothing, Commander. We saw some looters dragging it down the street and recaptured it. Now this shiny fella is our trophy by rights. That shiny fella belongs to the treasury. The inlay alone is worth more than a castle. I can't get in all of the dialogue. Pause it if you need to. Okay. So now we've got a gem golem we need to guard? Is that what? I, I'm not quite sure what just happened. That feels really, really weird. So we just have some survivors out here. Praise the gods that we didn't all perish. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, we just got a bunch of uh, survivors here. You follow. Is it what is it called? Prestidigipainter Golem. Um, okay. Sure. Let's interact with it. The magnificent and glittering golem, encrusted with gems and covered in intricate flowery embossing, triumphantly exclaims, Happy to be of service. May Shaylin brighten and vivify your day. Shaylin's amazing. Um, how did you end up here? I was in the Tower of Estrid Museum, but then some not-beautiful people came and started smashing everything. I asked them to show restraint, and that's when they decided to steal me. After all, I am beautiful and very valuable. They dragged me down the street, but I didn't want to go with them, so I kept stopping. The least beautiful of my kidnappers threw me over his shoulder and tried to run away with me, but I am very heavy, so his back made a not very a very not beautiful crunching sound. He started yelling, and then everyone else started yelling, and then and some of that yelling was directed at me, and then they started hitting me with their not beautiful weapons, and then some good crusaders drove them away and brought me here. This is amazing. Sorry if you don't like me reading it in, like, the, you know, staccato automaton voice, but, you know. <laughs> and now I've been lumbered with you. Waste a good metal, you are. And instead of working, I'm supposed to keep an eye on you so no one is tempted by the walking treasure trove. <laughs> uh, what are you? I am a prestidigipainter golem. Many millennia ago, I was built by Aslanti clerics of Shaylin, the goddess of beauty, to make the world a better place. In my joyful service, I have visited many lands, and for the past few centuries, I have resided at the Temple of the Sunrise Chrysanthemums in Tianja. But then the good cleric saw fit to offer me as a gift to the Mendevian Crusader so that you could share in the beauty I can create. Hmm. Well, can you do anything, like, you know, useful? 
My creators granted me the ability to place illusions on various items. I can change their color and texture to make them more beautiful and appealing to the eye. Would you like me to cast an illusion over your armor to make it green? Green is a very pleasant color, and it would match your eyes. My son agrees, but green is my son's favorite color, so, you know. Um, I want you to cast, so I'm guessing you can change the way stuff looks. Um, yeah, let's rephrase that. What can you do to help with a war effort? I was not designed for any type of combat, yet I can bring beauty and harmony to any type of combat. <laughs> Alright, so I'm guessing he lets, you know, he changes how my clothes look. I don't know if I, I wanted to, like, dye my, you know, dye my gear a different color than I had chosen. But, um, Helwig's, uh, Helwig's face paint's pretty on point. I put some work into that, so we're just gonna, you know, happy to be of service, and may Shaylin brighten and vivify your day. Wow. Um, so that's a thing. Okay. That's a, the path to the basement from earlier. Okay. So who... Oh, wait. This is, oh, this is Staunton's brother, right? Grizzled Dwarf turns a blade in his calloused hands, carefully inspecting its edge. When he sees me approaching, he sets the blade aside and greets me with a nod. A new face in the city! You picked a good time to come to Canabras. As you can see, you were in sore need of warriors. Seriously? Okay, I've got a merchant right out here. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll go in and dump all of that extra stuff I picked up as I was making my way up here. So, that's fine. Do you know everyone in Canabras by sight? Well, not everyone. But I make it my business to know the people who might need my services. A blacksmith's work isn't just at the anvil, you know. Um. So, uh. Here, yeah, well, I, are you Stalton Bra Vane's brother? Yep, where he goes, I go. That's how we've always done it, even before the world wound. I forge the armor, he goes into battle and breaks it, he brings it back to me, and I repair it and make it better than before. Everything's changed since then, of course, but that part has stayed the same. Why do you have your forge here in the tavern yard? Nah, eh, eh, we'll, 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 we'll ask about the forge in a minute. It feels like, it feels weird to cut back to Staunton. But how was Staunton to blame for the fall of Dresden? I've told this story so many times already. Well... Telling it one more time won't kill me. <sighs> Dresden was built after the First Crusade, back when it seemed like victory was ours for the taking and that the demon invasion would soon be at an end. The population of Old Sarkoris was thoroughly diminished, and many of them hoped to see their hard fighting repaid with a small plot of unclaimed land. Dresden was a fortress built on all our hopes, and on Mendev's ambitions, though you're not supposed to say that out loud. What a city it was, Helwig. I haven't told you my name yet. But you can't even imagine. It was built by the finest engineers from the Five Kings Mountains. Uh, Pathfinder's obligatory dwarven mountain realm. Uh, Queen Galfrey spared no expense. Dresden was meant to be the capital of the Crusade movement, a monument to its glory and a beacon of hope for all Galarian. Heroes were drawn there to seek fame and glory, and they came from all over. Taldor, Garund, Tianja, I couldn't list them all. A relic known as the Sword of Valor was kept there, the banner that had been carried into battle by Yamade herself, back when she was still human. That banner protected the city and kept the demons from teleporting inside its walls. As long as the banner was in its place, Dresden was invincible. Or so we thought. But then the world wound suddenly expanded. The demons launched a new onslaught and folks started saying it was time to declare the Second Crusade. Dresden was unassailable. Until one young officer was tempted by a beautiful woman. She convinced him that the banner shouldn't be hanging in the city, that its rightful place was on the battlefield. She whispered honeyed words about glory and valor, and convinced him that he could be a hero as great as Yamade herself. And the poor fool believed her. He rounded up some of his hot-headed friends and carried the banner outside the city gates on an unauthorized foray. The demons slaughtered them within seconds, but for some reason the courageous ringleader was spared. The whole army teleported into Dresden. It was a bloodbath. Jordan solemnly shakes his head. As you can guess, that officer was called Staunton Vane. And the woman turned out to be a demon. Not just any demon. It was Minago, that foul wretch. She's given us a lot of grief here in Canabras, too. Just don't ask me what I was doing while my brother was off having tryst with that beast and why I didn't save him from his own stupidity. <laughs> Blacksmith gestures as if to ward off the inevitable reprobation. Who could have guessed it would end like this? I failed my brother. That's the truth. I blame myself every day, looking at his plight. So that's the story. So... So, why do you have your forge here in the yard? Wherever I am, that's where my forge is. A 
true master of any craft will always find the tools they need. I miss my old forge, of course. It's now just a pile of charred stone and metal. But I've still got my hands, and that means I can work. Speaking of working, um, so we have this sword. Statistically, it's the same as one one of my party members already has. But it, anyway, do you recognize it? Do I recognize it? Of course I do. I made this with my own hands. There's my brand, see? Carefully takes the sword in his hands, gazing at it like a doting father. Oh, Yaniel, things have been tough without you. But at least we still got your sword. That's something. He returns the sword to me. I was hoping he was going to just, like, reforge it right here. Like, bam, bam, bam. Or I wait a couple of days and bam, bam, bam. Awesome magic sword. In battle, ordinary swords get blunted. They break. But sometimes a weapon can preserve. I don't even know how to explain it. I have no authority on these things. But something like an echo of the deeds done with the weapon? Or more like the reflection of the wielder's soul? I don't know. We'll save one thing. Take care of that sword. Yaniel may no longer be with us. But the demons will still remember why they need to turn tail and run when they see Radiance. Ugh, the scabbard's all worn. You can't be having a fine sword like this being carried around in this tatty thing. I'll make you a new one if you like. If the city stands strong and we both survive, come see me again and I'll have it ready. No charge. Alright, well, um... I'm not gonna, you know, make you watch me stare at the, you know, list of mercantile stuff, so time for our Commander Shepard impression? I should go. Torag, watch over you. If you need something for me, don't be afraid to stop by. Oh, I'll be back all right. I've got, like, you know, you got any use for, like, a couple dozen polearm-type weapons? Nah, anyway. Do we have anybody else around here? I think it's just the generic survivors. Area exit. Okay, so that's my way out. out. It's a loot chest again. I don't... I am hesitant to take loot items from, like... It, it, I mean, it just doesn't feel right, you know? Like, I'm sure the game is sort of like... <laughs> I, I could easily, like, you know, hand wave it as somebody saying, No, it, no it's okay. <laughs> Check it out. I'm defying gravity. Yep, it's like I'm like a cartoon character until Helwig realizes he's, you know, violating the laws of physics. Doesn't matter. Why am I... I'm curious if this is going to matter at some point. Like, you know, I was hoping I could, like, Assassin's Creed down into a hay bale or something and not have to walk all the way back to the steps, but... I'm sure this is going to matter at some point. We're probably... I mean, this place is probably going to get, you know, have, like... It's going to... Like, we're going to have siege laid to this place. The, I'm, I'm still working on what's up with the golem. It's got to be something more than just... He lets me tweak my appearance, but... I suppose we'll find out. All right. So we've got from here a couple of different routes out. And then we'll do some exploring. But um, between between the golem and that, you know, Wolgen guy downstairs and, you know, you know talking to Joran to find out exactly what Staunton did, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of running short on time. So this is probably a good place to press pause on the video again i will spare you watching me you know, like aggressively you know selling gear and figuring out how to tweak stuff so um once again thanks for watching feel free to check out the rest of the nimrindir plays wrath of the righteous series to see what's brought Hellwig the last warrior almost almost to the gates of canabras we will catch you next time